untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today I'm taking a look at Mono Green Elves, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, one of the most dominant best of one decks in the format, and the deck got a ton of new additions in Kaldheim, with that one mana, the full playset of a Just Para Sentinel, a 1-2 with Reach, that can tap alongside another untapped creature we control to add one mana of any color, so that gives the deck an additional one mana accelerant. At 2 mana we've got the full playset of Elvish Warmaster, a 2-2, saying whenever one or more other elves enter the battlefield under our control, we get to make a 1-1 green elf warrior creature token. This ability triggers only once each turn, but we can potentially trigger it during the opponent's turn as well, thanks to Collected Company, the 4 mana instant that lets us take a look at the top 6 cards of our library and put up to 2 creature cards with mana value 3 or less from among them onto the battlefield, so usually a nice 2 for 1 in this deck. And then for 7 mana, elves we control get plus 2 plus 2 and gain death touch until end of turn, so a great way to close out the game after we make a few tokens. And then the last new addition from Kaldheim is a Realmwalker, a 3 mana 2 3 shapeshifter with a changeling, so this creature is every creature type including elf, and as Realmwalker enters the battlefield we choose a creature type which is going to be elf, and we may look at the top card of our library at any time and cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of our library, so Realmwalker can provide a ton of card advantage over the course of the game, and that makes this mono green elf deck a very well rounded and powerful deck in the format, since we can have those very explosive starts, especially the turn 1 Lenor elves into turn 2 Archdruid is very hard to beat, but it can also win a grindy game with cards like Collected Company and Realmwalker, and can even recover from sweepers now. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana of course we're playing the full playset of Lenor Elves, one of the most powerful green cards in the format, and we get to take full advantage of it in this deck. Not only is it an elf, but turn 1 Lenor Elves can lead to a turn 2 Elvish Archdruid, which feels like cheating as we get to play the 3 mana 2-2, two -two, giving other elves we control plus 1 plus 1, and taps for green for each elf we control, so that very quickly lets us deploy our entire hand and usually win by turn 4. And then at 1 mana we also have 3 copies of Allosaur Shepherd, a 1-1, one -one, saying it cannot be countered, and green spells we control cannot be countered, so great against any blue decks. And for 6 mana, until end of turn, each elf creature we control has base, power and toughness 5-5, five five, and becomes a dinosaur in addition to its other creature types. So if our creatures have base, power 5-5, five five, they can still get plus 1 plus 1 from our various lords, like Elvish Clancaller and Elvish Archdruid, so that's also important to keep in mind. At 2 mana, of course, the full playset of Elvish Clancaller, a 1 1 giving other elves we control plus 1 plus 1, and for 6 mana, we can tap it to search our library for a card named Elvish Clancaller and put it onto the battlefield. So, another great mana sink. We've got our 4 copies of Elvish Warmaster, 2 copies of Elvish Visionary, a 1 1 that when it enters the battlefield lets us draw a card, and the full playset of Duna's Elite, a 2 2, saying when it enters the battlefield, if we control another elf, we get to make a 1 1 green elf warrior creature token. And then our heavy hitters at 3 mana, besides Elvish Archdruid and Realmwalker, also include 2 copies of Marwyn the Nurture, a legendary elf that's a 1-1, one -one, but whenever another elf enters the battlefield under our control, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Marwyn, and she taps to add an amount of green equal to Marwyn's power, so also very nice in combination with our various lords, which will help Marwyn tap for even more mana. So the goal of the deck is pretty simple, just dump as many elves in play as possible and eventually close out the game with a Warmaster or Shepherd activation. There's a few variations of the elf deck, there's a few flex slots like the Realmwalkers and the Marwyn. You could potentially be playing with Fierce Empath and a one-off copy of Crater Hoof Behemoth to search up. You could play with Itlamok, Cradle of the Sun, as another way to generate a ton of mana, but Marwyn kind of fills the same role, and we can also hit it with a Collected Company. And then a mana base, also very important, includes 17 basic forests, and 4 copies of Castle Garenbrick, which cannot be underestimated in this deck. Getting up to 6 mana to activate abilities means we can potentially activate our Clan Caller or Shepherd a turn sooner, also great with a Warmaster, and just helps us deploy our hand that much faster. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Sentinel into Clan Caller still gives us access to three mana, although Inquisition gonna have a look here. So against a discard heavy controlling deck, having access to double company is a nice way to potentially take over after the opponent has some initial interaction. Godless Shrine into Thoughtseize, which can take company, but goes for Archdruid instead. 
All right, so we've got the mana to cast company if we draw land. Still not exactly sure what the opponent is up to. If we need to expect any sweepers or... All right, vampires. Soren minuses. And put, say, Drana in play. It's pretty strong. Don't have the mana to cast company. So instead, I could either Realm Walker and hope that there's a one drop on top or play a Warmaster. I think Warmaster has more value, especially considering we can play company in the opponent's turn to potentially trigger it. So not the best start imaginable for us. But uh, hopefully we can company next turn. Vito, pretty strong with Sorin as well. Drana attacks, hits us for three. And triggers Vito. Alright, land is good. So... Probably worth it to cast Company now, since if we hit a Visionary and draw into a 1-drop, I can still cast it. And definitely one more win. And then, since we already have a Realm Walker in hand, I think I prefer Elite to grow Marwyn even more. So that's going to be out of range from Sorin's 3 damage. And uh, yeah, Marwyn gives us access to enough mana to potentially activate the Warmaster as well. Our hand's still quite good. But don't have the best aerial defense, just a Sentinel with Reach that can maybe chum block. So, could still be close. So we're undeciding what to do next. It's just gonna pump Drana, hit us for six, trigger Vito for six. So that would put me dead next turn. If I chump, then I could still be dead to Vito using the five mana ability next turn. Although if we can kill Sorin, we remove one avenue of life gain. I think it's worth it to chump now while we still can. And the Knight of the Ebon Legion is gonna grow. Alright, so now we've got to think. For opponents, untaps with Sorin, we're dead to Vito plus Drana. If they hit a land, we're also dead to Vito. So the only way we can survive this situation is to either just kill the opponent on the spot, which I don't think is happening here, or kill Sorin, have enough on defense to survive an attack, and hope they don't draw a fifth land to activate Vito. So let's start by playing the Elite, since that grows Marwyn, so it just gives us access to more bodies while keeping the same amount of mana. And then probably worth it to play Realm Walker. Could also activate Warmaster, but it doesn't necessarily give me enough to win. So we might have to go pretty deep here with Realm Walker. Land on top. Let's see if we can do better. Archdruid, Shepherd, Warmaster. So we'll probably want to arch through it, and then not gonna have enough mana to activate Shepard this turn. So might be better off with another Warmaster at that point. And then we can just activate Warmaster a bunch next turn. Another Elves over the top we can play. And then I gotta kill Sorin here. And we should be able to kill Sorin if we attack with everyone. Alright, so land means we're dead. Doesn't look like they drew a land. 
I can take six from Drana in the air. And then we get a strike back next turn for lethal. And Drana attacks, we'll take it. And the Legion's landing. Alright. Well, our mission is pretty simple this turn. Kill the opponents. And I think we'll manage. Play elites, because we might as well. And then we can activate Archroot and Marwin multiple times here to use the Warmaster's ability. And I think we'll have enough. And our opponent agrees and scoops it up, so very close game here. Came down to the wire. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and no one mana accelerant, but turn 3 Archdruid on the play is still definitely worth keeping. Probably a lead with Warmaster. And hopefully our creatures survive. Alright, Shepherd could be useful if we're suspecting any counter spells. As our opponent leads with Hallowed Fountain. Opponent Asper controls, so we could see some sweepers in our future. Vanishing vs. Exiles Warmaster. So we could double spell Warmaster plus Shepherd, or we could play Archdruid. Interesting spots. Archdruid is a bit more mana efficient, especially if we end up drawing a land next turn. Thoughtsea is going to have a look, probably takes another Warmaster here, or maybe Shepherd if the opponent is holding counterspells. Takes a Warmaster. Well, we're kind of at the mercy of the opponent's hand here. If they've got a Sweeper, we're going to be in trouble. Play Shepherd. And... I could just play a single clan caller, or we could play both. Do we think we have a chance if our opponent wipes the boards? We'll have to get pretty lucky to find a realm walker or a company. I think we just uh, empty our hand here. And hope for the best. Just the Narset part of Veils, trying to find a Sweeper perhaps. But our opponent might already be dead here, since we can just activate Shepherd next turn, attack with the team, and that's it. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta cross your fingers and hope they don't have the Wrath. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Turn 1 Elf, always exciting. And... Turn 2 Realm Walker, you know doesn't let us play anything over the top right away. But how about a turn to Archdruid instead? Oh yes. Opponent also mono green. And looks like more of a stompy deck than an elf deck. And I think the elves are going to be favored in this matchup. So can play elite. Make more mana with Archroids before we tap it. Taps for five. Realm Walker, see what's on top. Another Realm Walker. Alright. And then a neat trick with Realm Walker and Clan Caller is if there's a card on top that we don't like, like for example a land, then we can use the Clan Caller's ability to shuffle away the top card of our deck essentially by finding another clan caller and maybe give us a better shot at finding more elves on top with a realm walker. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Sentinel into Warmaster plus Sentinel. Trigger Warmaster. Visionary to hopefully find something like a company or a realm walker. I'll take an arch route too. So still Warmaster into Sentinel here. And 
and Archdruid pumping the team's already quite strong, facing the green-white angel deck, presumably. Can be a tough matchup, although we've got a great start. And I think here we just attack instead of playing a visionary, since otherwise we miss out on a lot of damage. And then next turn we should be able to cast everything. Alright, so step one. Probably play Visionary. And then... Let's see, right now the Archdruid taps for eight. So... Maybe play the Elves. Then time this for nine, cast a company, see what we hit. Another Archdruid and a Realmwalker. Name Elf. Another Realmwalker on top we can play. Uh, could... five, six, seven, eight. Could also activate the uh, Warmaster here. That might be slightly better. Can even use Castle Garenbrick to make one extra mana. And then just activate Warmaster here. Attack. But we could have kept going. And uh, yeah, the Angel Company deck probably doesn't have a great way to recover from this, but might as well close out the game while we can. Alright, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. A Ragdos deck could be a tough matchup if the opponent has a lot of interaction, but we'll see here. For now Sentinel, next turn Clan Caller plus Shepherd. Alright, looks like an aggressive red deck instead with a double burning tree opener. Into Karizev, okay. So a next turn is gonna hurt. For now, Clan Caller into might as well play Lunar Elves. Keeping Sentinel on defense has a bit of merit, but runs into some issues if the opponent has removal for the Clan Caller. Opponent attacks, could see an Ember Cleave here for just two mana. Don't think I should block. And there's Ember Cleave for two mana. So yeah, opponent with one of the best starts imaginable. So let's see if we can somehow stabilize. Opponent is down to one card at least. So sequencing is going to be important. I have access to 5 mana with the Sentinel. Getting Archdruid to pump the team is important. So I think Warmaster into Archdruid makes sense. And then Sentinel taps Clan Caller, which I don't want to block with. So now I've got two reasonable blockers and an Archdruid. Sadly, Lightning Strike takes out Archdruid. So are we dead on board? Take six from the Trampling Burning Tree. I can... Block, block, but then we're taking six, seven, eight, nine. So then I would be dead. So that doesn't work. So instead... I guess we can block like so and fall to one. Yeah, I think that's uh, a reasonable block. So we're dead to any burn spells. And Ramana Prunes can close out the game with an extra land drop. Don't think we can deal 20 damage this turn. So we'll try and set up for lethal next turn before they can find another land. So probably involves Warmaster. And then can I afford to play Realmwalker is a question. If I play Shepherd, next turn I can maybe use the ability to attack back for the win. If I play Realmwalker, I should have enough toughness to survive, but it's going to be close. Shepherd might be better here. Just because it allows me to use its ability next turn. And then can I afford to attack... 
can maybe send the Warmaster and the Clan Caller, which I'm not planning to block with. Something like this. Alright, so we're dead to a lot of top decks here. They can also activate Castle Emberith, which is already scary by itself. And a Torbran should do it here. So everything deals two additional damage. Alright, so this is probably the best I can do, but we're going to lose our entire board. But we're technically still alive. And Marwin off the top, not going to save me. So yeah, GG's. So a perfect draw from the red deck, on the play good enough to beat Elves, and uh, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna bother blocking this one. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, hand is promising, could use a second land, but can't really mulligan turn one Lanor Elves into potential turn to Archdruid. And even if we fail to draw land, we can still play another Elves to maybe help us out, but there we go. Turn to Archdruids, facing Breeding Pool. Scavenging Ooze, not a very big threat, and another Archdruid. Alright, so now sequencing is important. So how about another Lenor Elves into Elite. And then we want to play Archroods, play Shepherd, and then next turn we can go off with our Realmwalker, or we can just activate Shepherd and win the game. Yeah, this was pretty difficult to beat. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Fine hand. Facing turn one Shepherd, so another mirror match. And none of us have an early accelerant, so this might be a fair fight. Turn to play Warmaster, maximize the number of elf tokens we get. Our hand's not great for the mirror. No Archroots, no Marwyn, no Company, no Realmwalker. Those are the types of cards we want to see. Right, Eleanor Elves a bit late to the party here. And do I want to trade for Shepherd? I don't think so. Because the Shepherd's ability could come in handy after we make a ton of tokens. Alright, there's Company, that's a good one. Now, Shepherd, I'm not opposed to trading for Lanor Elves to potentially slow down a Company by a turn. So that trade would be fine. So now our opponent's got 4 mana. It's going to main phase Company. And not the best hit, Sentinel plus Clan Caller could have been worse. Opponent offers a trade, I'll decline. And not the most efficient turn. Could Visionary in the hopes of drawing a land or a one drop. Which might be worth it here. Since I really need to cast a good company or be able to play double Clan Caller next turn. Alright, land is good. So we're gonna take a bit of a beating. Our opponent could activate Shepherd, but then they won't have many attacking elves anymore. Warmaster is scary. And a clan caller. Alright, so we're pretty far behind on board now. Don't think I wanna trade. So 
So we can play Rune Company, can play Double Clan Caller. Company's probably my best bet. Hope we hit some Arch Druids to help us deploy our hand faster. Probably no reason to main phase. Keep the opponent guessing. And we'll see what they do. Another Elite. So they might not be going for an all-out attack this turn, which buys us more time. Third Clan Caller. Alright, so let's company and hope for the best. We did hit Arch Druid, and then probably one Visionary. Alright, so want to jump the least amount possible. So I can take 10 and then I have to block three creatures. And if I can trade for the Warmaster, that's not a bad thing. Although I kind of want to trade for the Shepherd too at that point, so they don't have any Anthem effects anymore. Although that's going to leave me with very few Elves to leverage Archdruid. So yeah, this is going to be a tough one. Now if I double block Clan Caller and single block Clan Caller, those will all end up dying. So we can potentially trade off for some of the opponent's creatures that way. This would be a trade. And this would be a trade. I'm taking nine, or I could trade War Masters. Still want to keep some elves for the Archdruids, and War Master especially is a great combo with it. So we're at two. And time to play some elites before tapping Archdruid. Now I do have enough mana to potentially activate Warmaster on defense too. Although I imagine double clan colors just about as good. Alright, and then probably gonna hang back. Opponent one mana short of activating their Warmaster, I believe. Thanks to Castle, they've got six. And it's just going to be another Warmaster instead. And a Fierce Empath, which can get Crater of Behemoth, which can close out the game if that comes down. Alright, Collected Company is a great start. And so we hit Realm Walker and probably another Clan Caller. Name Elf. And then I can still activate Clan Caller if I want. How much mana does Archdruid make? 13, so I've got 50 mana to work with. So let's shuffle first with the Clan Caller. Get the last one. And then if I play Realm Walker, I won't be able to activate Warmaster anymore. So I might be better off activating the Warmaster. And then forcing some chum blocks. So probably fine to attack with all. And hope for the best. And our opponent just took it. They didn't want to do the math. So yeah, very close mirror match here, with none of our decks having a particularly explosive start, but uh, math ended up being pretty key when making our blocking decisions, when facing off against a few lords. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Sentinel lets us go Clan Caller into Shepherd. Turn 3 Archdruids, turn 4 Company. Opponent also with turn 1 Elves. So they might have the more explosive start. If they have a turn 2 Archdruid of their own. But being on the play certainly helps. Right, it's just a Cultivate, or point to Ramp deck and not an Elf deck. Gets double island. 
All right, time to play Arstrid. Our spells are uncounterable, which could potentially matter if our opponent's playing counter spells. Five mana. Do we see Nissa? We do. Or, well, we don't really see Nissa, but still counts. Should be able to overpower the Planeswalker here. The land fights for us. Especially with another Archdruid in hand. So, I could play Archdruids. The original Archdruids would tap for five. Not enough to activate Shepherd by itself. So I think Archdruid and then attack might be better. So if I send three of these at Nissa, that's still enough. And then I can maybe company it in some speeds to catch the opponent. Yeah, this seems reasonable. And Clan Caller will do, and a Realm Walker seems like a nice follow up. So our opponent loses Nissa, loses their lands. Pretty far behind on board with double Arch Truths, and then a Realm Walker to provide steady stream of card advantage. So, yeah, Mono Green Elves, definitely one of the powerhouses in Historic, especially in Best of One, where people don't get access to a ton of sweepers after sideboard. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.